Hi, I'm Dominic, and I want to give you a brief introduction to the work my supervisor, Andrew Curtis, and I are doing at the University of Edinburgh. And most of you are probably not familiar with what optimal design is, so this presentation aims to give a brief introduction to the concepts. I will keep it very general because those methods can be applied to any form of experiment. And the biggest hurdle is the computational feasibility. And any form of collecting data in geophysics and using it to learn more about the Earth is an experiment. And to start with, I will summarize what Bayesian optimal design is in about one sentence. It aims to find the experimental design which is expected to measure data to gain as much information as possible about the desired model parameters. And this sentence is quite a lot to process, and I will basically spend the rest of the presentation trying to explain it. Um, so let's start with the first part, find the experimental design. And formally, we can just express that as finding a design which maximizes some measure of quality. And in the simplest case, we'll just go through all of the designs, calculate the quality measure, and pick the best one. But what is a design actually? A design is basically anything that describes your experiment. And in the simplest case, this could just be the offset of your size, uh, seismometer from an artificial source. But it can be truly anything. And in the geophysics, for example, it could be a rotational or translational sensor. It could be um, the, um, the orientation, so the vertical or horizontal alignment. It could be the frequency, frequency range you use in the post-processing. And of course, the spatial position of your sensors. And it's also possible to introduce financial constraints into this design process. And what is this measure of quality now? And it's only here that I start to make use of the Bayesian framework to make it possible to optimize for fully nonlinear problems. And the basis of the quality measure we use is Shannon's information. And Shannon's information criterion is just um, the information of a probability density function, usually expressed as the negative of the entropy. And this is the expected value of the logarithm of this function. And to make that intuitively sensible for you, um, we have here the entropy of a simple coin toss. And on the left, you can see the coin toss probability. And on the right, you can see the entropy. And you can see that a fair coin toss with a 50-50 distribution has the highest entropy, which means we are, have the least information about the outcome as possible. A completely unfair coin toss, so with 100% probability for heads or tails, has the lowest entropy, which means the most information, because we basically know the outcome beforehand. And if we go back to the description of the optimal design process, how can we measure a gain in information? And we can define this gain in information, which depends on the experimental design and the observed data, as the difference between the entropy of the prior of our model parameters and the posterior. But this information gain still depends on the observed data which we don't have if we haven't done our experiment. So we need to make an expectation over all the possible data we could observe and make an expectation over this information gain. And this uh, expected information gain has the posterior in it. And in most geophysical application, uh, calculating this posterior is a very challenging task. And doing this for a lot of the data sets is in many cases just impossible. And this is what I would call the model space approach, where we have to solve the inverse problem. But we could also reformulate this problem to solve it in the data space, and this is this formula. And all of the formulas are also on my poster if you want to have a closer look later on. And here, we only use the evidence and the likelihood of our problem, so we don't have to solve an inverse problem. This makes it a lot easier to solve in many cases. But for example, if we have a lot of sensors, this would mean that we have to solve the, the entropy in very high dimensions, which could make it infeasible again. So for example, a seismic source location, which with a low number of model parameters, the model space approach could be the preferable one. And my poster offers details on the methods used to solve these problems in practice. And I want to end it with like a small call for collaboration, because I have I'm learning about all those methods, but I need applications where to apply them in a geophysical context. So if you have any idea or think optimal design could be useful to your problem, you can just approach me. Thanks a lot.